Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about incompetency. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, I just joined a new company and my team lead has 15 years of experience. We are using Java and Spring Boot. He is using ints instead of booleans. He doesn't understand the basics of object-oriented programming. He's never heard of solid domain-driven design, composition over inheritance, design patterns, etc. When I ask him some best about some best practices, he always says that he's heard about that, but then I catch him googling what that means. When I say to him with within an argument how it sh how how things sh should look. Uh, when we argue about how something should work, I ha he argues, I have 15 years of experience, I don't need tutorials. He's calling, he's calling best practices tutorials. Uh, I said to HR that I want to go into another team and she said to me, well maybe you should think, uh, you should consider that he has 15 years of experience and you should respect him. The story, uh, story goes, the story goes on even longer, what should I do? Well, uh, there's nothing you can do, unfortunately, literally nothing, because your company is being run by ignorant people, and that's the whole story. Uh, this uh, this scenario that you're describing is actually it's something that I've seen many times, and that is when you have people running the company who have no knowledge whatsoever what matters when you run a successful IT company. Uh, what they will do is that they will do the best they can. They will hire somebody usually. This is an example of that. Usually based on years of experience and personal charisma, uh, CVs, things of that nature, which is the ignorant way. It is the ignorant thing to do, and it's not no. It's nobody's fault. It's, I mean, it's the same thing I would do if I were to like. I mean, if I'm gonna hire a, a lawyer or a doctor or someone to come and fix my pipes. I don't know anything about any of that stuff, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go with the rating or like something, like a tip from somebody else, because I don't really know what I'm looking for. And your company is being run exactly the same way. So that's why this person is there, because, and why you notice that this person is incompetent is because you actually know the field, and your HR person does not. And that sucks. But there's nothing you can do about it because if they're not, um, if they don't know enough to listen to other software developers and that they hold up this 15 years of experience flag as some type of, I don't know, proof of the competency of this person, you're basically stuck. And honestly, incompetent co workers, that's very common in IT due to this thing, due to this culture of having like an HR person or something like that doing the hiring when the this person doesn't know anything, literally nothing, basically everything that is software is magic to them. So having that person deal with these sorts of issues or having such a person do the hiring is, it's ignorant, it's ignorant as hell. And the way to do it, the way that actually should work, which is coincidentally the way that the serious big companies usually do it, is that you have a screening situation where you screen people with other people that are their blood. In other words, you have senior software developers who test and interview every single person who gets into that company. Now, if you work at a very small company, that's kind of hard because you need to hire one person to start off with who can do that. And But the, after that, they should always be doing this. You should never, ever, 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 ever hire a software developer or anybody who's doing anything as part of the software development process without consulting a senior software developer. Never. Don't even hire a scrum master. Don't hire a PO. Nothing without talking to someone who is good at the actual software development process. Because, which I think is funny, you forget that the person who's making you the money is the programmer. Not the PO, not the Scrum Master, not the QA. The only person you should be optimizing everything for is the productivity of the software developer.
It is more important that you have these surrounding stakeholders fit with the software development team and then being able of course to you know do their own thing than it is for you to have them tell the software developers how to do their job. Because uh, I know that this sounds really weird but on average you actually get more output and higher quality software if the software developers are always consulted and have a say in who they work with because what happens otherwise is that you create these weird this exact thing you create this weird situation where you're bringing in a person who basically just steamrolls everybody else and you lose all the motivation you lose all, everything uh, everybody gets apathetic because now they don't care an, anymore about their co uh, code and they don't care about the company and the entire system just falls to shit because you didn't do that basic thing where you know it's like having a herd of cows their health goes beyond everything else if you if you want to make any money from them so why would you hire a, i don't know i heard a sheep why would you hire a sheep why, why would you optimize your your uh, your farm around the fucking dog no optimize for the sheep and so all you can really do now is that you can either quit or just focus on your own work, which is usually what happens. People go into ap in an apathetic way, and they kind of just yeah, they just zone out and just go into uh, delivery mode, and never ever try to do anything to fix this. Uh, if you were a tech lead or something like that, you could fire this person, or you could. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? The reason why you're not seeing a difference here is because the HR person respects the years of experience of that individual more than your word. And that's the now it's all of office politics again. Who has the best friend? Who has the most powerful friends? Who has the most uh, I don't know charisma, uh, mojo, whatever bullshit that is used to give this HR incompetent, ignorant person a good gut feeling, so that that person can feel confident in that. Yes, I should act on this because this person knows what they're talking about. And that's why office politics exist in the first place. So what I want you to take away from this is that office politics and all of this bullshit comes down to one thing and that is that you have highly intelligent people who know how to get things done working with ignorant people who know nothing and because you can't hurt people's feelings and because we have roles and titles and responsibilities and hierarchies and all that stuff uh, and very few people are humble enough to understand when they're out of their depth knowledge wise uh, you have these sorts of issues uh, they can be solved in many ways but unfortunately you are in a situation where you're not really able to fix this because the problem that you are describing can only be fixed either by this person messing up so bad that even the HR person starts to asking uh, asking questions right or if you have a higher manager you can talk to or something like that it's very unlikely that otherwise that anything is going to change so I suggest to you either just focus on your own work and just zone out tune out you know do the thing that people who hate their jobs do or even better quit and go to a different company have a great day